My name is Brian Flum and I'm with Nortec Security and Control and today we're going to be talking about the Elan system and specifically the G1 install. Uh, this is our entry level controller but it can do a lot of things that the other controllers can't do, our bigger controllers. So first thing is, is there's a power button on the front so you can easily kick it on and off without having to reach around the back. On the back side of it, let's talk about some of the connections. This gives you one RS-232 port. This can be used to connect to things like a security panel, an AV receiver, or maybe a DirecTV box. The other thing here is three IR ports. Today we're going to be using those to connect to the cable box and the TV. It has an audio out used with our intercom feature for putting a chime through the speakers and is used for using paging as well. So I can take an iPhone or one of our touch screens and make a page throughout the system. A sense input can be used with one of our many sensors that we have to monitor. Maybe it's a, a standalone gate or you want to be able to monitor if a TV is on or off and we'll send out an alert. Maybe you're watching little Johnny and making sure he's not turning his TV on at night. And then there's an IRN which can be used with an IR receiver remote so you can get basic control of the on-screen display. Now one of the features I mentioned earlier that is not on our larger controllers is the OSD out. Why not take your TV and make that a control point on your system? Match that up with the HR200 remote or that entry level remote that comes with it and it gives you the full control. USB on the back of here can be used with the USB camera. Again, taking that on-screen display and let's make it a little bit more interactive with the intercom. I can page that intercom on the TV and then interact with it with the camera so the person on the other side can see me as well as talk with me. We've got the network LAN connection here. This is an IP based control system so it has to be connected to the network. Now this is PoE plus of it as well. So if I have the correct switch, I no, don't need to use the power supply that comes with it. I can just plug it straight into the network. The other advantage is this has wireless built in it which makes it perfect for retrofit solutions. If I can't get a wire to it, I can easily connect it to the wireless network of the house. And again, 12 volt power supply right here comes included with it, as well as the three IR emitters and the RS-232 to mini jack so we can connect to third party devices to control them. We've just finished talking about the connections on the back and for today's install it's going to be real easy. It's two connections. We don't have a PoE switch in the house so we're going to have to use that 12 volt power supply and then the second connection is getting it onto that network and plugging it in. So there's simple two connections. Plugging it into the network as well as the power here on the back and then turning it on in the front. What's going to happen now is it's going to load our software and activate it just like powering up your PC. From then all of our programming is going to be done from a PC, which you'll see here shortly. Today we're going to be working on the networking side of it. Elan's controllers are IP based, so the network needs to be steady and reliable. We always recommend using something like a Luxel product to upgrade the network and make it pretty much bulletproof. Today's example, we're going to use the cable modem router provided from AT&T Universe. Well, we were out of ports on this, so we needed to add a hardwired switch to it so we can add a hardwired connection to the G1 downstairs. So it's very simple. We come off the AT&T U-verse modem router, plug it into the switch here, and then this Cat5 goes downstairs into the family room where the G1 is going to be connected. Simply by connecting those two wires, now the network is hardwired. It's going to be much more reliable than doing the wireless which is always an option, but please use it as a last option. So what we're working on here today is we're going to open up the configurator software. That's what we use to program the Elan platform. And we're going to add in the drivers, how we're going to talk to the GC3 panel from 2GIG. Now, important thing to remember is Elan is the only automation company that can talk to 2GIG. It's a very big deal in our world. So once the G tool software is open up, the system name and the password is all that we need to get into the system and I can go configurator. It's going to open up another little window and start looking for the 2 gig on the network. Immediately pulls up and is connected to the 2 gig or to the Elon G1 controller that we talked about earlier. Now very easy to navigate through. I'm just going to go to the security panel here. It's going to reach out, pull up the security within the G1 
and it's pretty quick and easy. You don't even need a keyboard to program in a lot of our aspects. It's really just fill in the blank. That's why we call it the configuring. I'm going to go to security panel and I'm going to add a new device. Oops. And there I see the two gig panel here and there's two different firmware. So I'm going to select the latest one that we have loaded on this GC3, 3.1.0. And I'm going to go OK. So what that's doing is that's activating the GC3 panel or driver on our G1 controller. Now that we've got the driver activated on the G1, we're going to get into the GC3 panel, system settings, and we have to enable pairing mode. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start the pairing here. I'm going to come over into the Elan, enable pairing or get pairing key down here at the bottom. I'm going to hit add device, looking for devices. Devices paired. Now the two panels are talking to each other. The easy part now is, is all the programming is done before on the GC3 panel with the security contacts added, the motion detectors and such. In the Elan realm, all we got to do is come over here is read GC3 configuration. It's going to start reading this panel and pulling in every device that's been programmed into it. The great thing is, is on our viewer side, which you'll see here shortly, all of it's done. We can move on to the next thing, which is getting the TV in the family room to work. Now we're going to talk about adding the GHR200 remote to the Elan system here. Now one of the great things about this remote is the only time you physically connect to it is when you need to store in the IP information of the controller, which is an auto discover feature, and the wireless SSID information for that local network. So what we're going to do is we've already got it connected to our PC with the USB cable provided. I'm going to come up here and tell the Elan system that we're going to start looking for a handheld remote, in this case the DHR200. All right. We're going to let that guy populate. Now, by simply turning the remote on, it's going to ask for a password. That password, once it powers up, is going to be 3526 enter. Automatically says here USB active. I hear it beep here on my computer and I can see the backup data. We don't even need to do anything with that. I'm going to jump over here and I'm going to go into configure the attached handheld remote. And from there, I got to give this guy a static IP, but first I'm going to jump down here and go load controller settings. It's going to look at the network and it automatically pulls in the IP address of that G1 we showed earlier. Now I just need to give this guy an address. It's going to, I'm going to give him 10.0.0. We're going to go 210. And then I got to put in the SSID information. And from there it is, all caps. I could type and then the password. Now it's very important to make sure you get the proper encryption or no encryption. In this case, we're using a WPA and I'm going to hit save config. It's going to happen now. It's going to ask us to disconnect. I click OK and I unplug the remote from the laptop. It's going to take it about five minutes and it's going to load up, jump onto the network. And then the controller, that G1, is going to push all the information we need to this, update the firmware, whatever's needed. So we're going to fast forward here five minutes. Now that the remote's been programmed and set up with the USB cable, after the five minute break, it will automatically populate into our interface tab. Then it's as simple as jumping down to the media zones, adding that great room that we programmed earlier, moving it over to the available tab and click apply. Once that happens, the remote will automatically program itself from the G1. I never connect to it again. Then it's as simple as going to the home button, going to media, and now I can control that cable box, that PlayStation 4, that Blu-ray player, even your music player like a Sonos.